in the rules of the state of Arizona. The mandatory eight count is in effect. The three knockdown rule is in effect. And three judges will score the bout on the 10-point must system. Taylor unbeaten in his professional career. And as they start round one, Alex, what does Taylor have to do to win the bout? Well, if you remember, Jim, the last time he was on ABC, he drew with Howard Davis. That was really his biggest test. I thought he barely won the fight. The draw wasn't that unfair a decision. But in that fight and in the two subsequent fights since, Meldrick seems to have lost a little bit of his leverage, a little bit of his punching power. We referred earlier in the opening to the fact that he's going to try to sit down on his punches, bob and weave from the waist, get more leverage, get his legs back into his punching power, back into his uh, arsenal of punches. And whether he can do that, I think, will determine not only whether he wins this fight, but whether he's able to move up and be really effective when he challenges for the title. Prima Ramos appears in tapes of his previous bouts to be a tough body puncher. Do you think he'd like to try to hem Meldrick in and imprison him on the ropes? Well, that's exactly right. He's a very tough body puncher when he can hem you in. If you're going to let Prima Ramos set his feet and unload with both hands, you're going to be in trouble. Here you see some of that boxing skill that Primo Ramos has. He is not a typical Mexican fighter. He is not a face fighter. He's not walk in. He lived for a few years of his life in Chicago, turned pro in Chicago. In fact, was the 1980 National Golden Gloves champion of the United States. He has some boxing ability. He can pick with a jab. He can move in and out. He likes to start slowly. Primo does. He loves to cover up well, not give the opponent anything to shoot at, find out what the opponent has. He's never seen Meldrick Taylor fight. And he's going to try to find out in the first round here and in the next couple of rounds what Meldrick has and then try to go to work in the middle rounds. More than halfway through round one, Ramos has been in against tough and recognizable opponents. He fought Robin Blake when Robin Blake was still good and Terrence Ali in 1982. He, he lost on a cut to Terrence Ali. The only time he's been stopped, he's never been down. Primo Ramos. There's good body punching there by Meldrick. There's the quickness. Great hand speed. You saw how easily and fluidly Taylor releases the hands and throw punches in bunches. But the, but the key is, Jim, whether he can let his hands go and still have power on them. He may have to sacrifice some of that speed to get more power in his punches to be effective at the world-class level. Ramos landed a good right-hand lead. So far, most of the action in the center of the ring where Taylor is likely to be more effective. Coming to the end of round one, we're going to stay here between rounds as Meldrick Taylor will repair to his corner for instructions from Lou Duda and George Benton. of the talking in Taylor's corner. He wanted more jabbing from Meldrick. And Jimmy Montoya, the chief second in Ramos's corner, said the same thing. Oh. Tremendous hand speed from Meldrick. The left of the body and doubling instantly up to the head. Lou Duva saying, turn, turn, in Meldrick's corner. And you saw the move from Meldrick in response, trying to go to his right and land a right. Good uppercut inside by Ramos. Taylor comes right back. Whoever you talk to about Primo Ramos says the same thing. 
He comes to fight. He will not quit. A tough, tough kid. When we spoke to him yesterday, he said, this is a great opportunity for me. I mean, if I win this fight, I get my dream, and that's a shot at a world title. Ramos is 26 years old, will be 27 in June. Taylor, not yet 21. He was only 17 when he won the Olympic gold medal in the featherweight class in Los Angeles in 1984. And of course, the big question at that time was, how much would he fill out? Where would he eventually wind up fighting as a professional? For the moment, it appears that he is destined to fight in this class, the junior welterweight, 140 pound level. Decisive factor is Taylor's speed. He's just out quicking Primo. Primo's got to do one of two things. Either he's got to move to stay away from the speed, or he's got to throw heavy punches of his own to stop Belgium from letting his hands go so freely. And moments ago, you saw him again land the uppercut inside. This one to Taylor's chin. Ramos now getting a little bit off balance from time to time as he appears somewhat befuddled by Taylor's hand speed. No body punch. Right on the belt. Might have been a little bit low, but uh, uh, it had an effect on Primo. Those are also right on the belt. Again, turning, and again, Primo Ramos just does not know how to combat the hand speed of Meldrick Taylor. Taylor able once again to double up with the left hook. The referee is Al Munoz, works here in the state of Arizona. Finally, he has something to say about a low blow. And this time, he's going to deduct a point without a previous warning. That is a hair trigger deduction, I'll tell you, from Al Munoz. I, he may have warned him verbally. We saw nothing uh, physically to indicate that he was warning Belgic for low blow. We bring you back live to the point at South Mountain, just southwest of Phoenix, Arizona. Round three between Meldrick Taylor and Primo Ramos. Taylor in the white trunks, Ramos in the red. Meldrick Taylor, 1984 Olympic gold medalist as a featherweight, moving up today for his first bout at 140 pounds. to tell Meldrick Taylor to keep the punches up. He asked for a point deduction toward the end of round two. Primo Ramos has felt the effect of Meldrick's punches to the body. He's covering well to the body. He's almost giving Meldrick the head to cover his body. Meldrick is determined to punch him to the body, and he has to on, punch below him, the belt in order to hit him to the body. Meldrick Taylor finishing the exchange with the left hook. Come on, give me that shotgun. You mentioned before the bout, Alex, that Lou Duda and George Benton have wanted Taylor to settle his feet down and deliver more solid blows. Follow through on his punches a little more. More in the style of Henry Armstrong. Have you seen the effect of that instruction? Good thumping right hand to the body. I really haven't. Uh, he has reverted to the same kind of form we saw him with most recently with Rocky Montoya, which is tremendous hand speed, but and it's, I must say, it's a little bit better punching power in isolated instances. But a lot of times, a lot of flurrying, but not a lot on the punch. And as he moves up to junior welterweight, he's going to have to have more power to have an effect on the heavier fighters. Despite the point deduction, Meldrick is totally dominant. Punching power comes from the legs. Meldrick Taylor has tremendous legs. He ran cross country in, in high school. He just has to get those legs into his exchanges. He's been tremendously effective through these first three rounds with the left hook, particularly doubling up with the left hook to the body and then to the head. He's landed that particular combination several times. There's another left hook to the face of Primo Ramos and another. And Ramos has started to back up. And a nice little move by Meldrick. Two punches landed, stepped to the side, and landed two more. 
As much as they're coming at Primo Ramos from so many angles, he really doesn't know how to defend against it. And while he's defending against it, he isn't punching himself. Meldrick Taylor piling up a lead, apparently, in the first three rounds of this bout against Primo Ramos. We'll be back. Back round four begins between Meldrick Taylor and Primo Ramos. In a bout in which Taylor has been progressively more effective using great hand speed and effective combinations and sh showing no shyness about stepping up inside to trade punches with a tough infighter in Ramos. Taylor very effective with the jab now. Here's the first time we've seen Meldrick really doing the bending that he told us he would do coming into the fight. He's trying to get down low and fire punches coming up out of a crouch. He pointed out at the top of the show, Jim, that Meldrick really is just a kid. Come on, Still jab your way in, baby. Jab your way in. He's been around a long time, but he won the gold medal at such an early age, we sometimes expect more maturity of him than he really possesses. He has to concentrate on so many things, jabbing, uh, not being square. Lou Duva and George Benton think he's too square to his opponents. And he has to present a smaller target by leading with the left foot more. He has to think about his defense. He, he has to think about setting down on his punches. It is mechanical to him right now. He can't think about everything at once. And sometimes he tries to think about too much. And he lessens his effectiveness. He might try to just go out and be natural and let his hands go and rip his punches. And of course, he must try to quell the anxiety which has come from having operated in the shadow of his four Olympic stablemates, Terrell Biggs, Evander Holyfield, Mark Breland, and Pernell Whitaker, all of whom have made more material progress in their professional's career so far than has Meldrick. I think in some ways, good punch there by Primo Ramos. I think in many ways that's been a benefit to Meldrick, that he hasn't been in the spotlight too early, that he has been out of the spotlight and allowed to develop, allowed to have a bad fight once in a while, as he did with Victor Flores early in his career. On the other hand, he's rubbing shoulders every day with guys who either hold world championships already or are lining up for the right to fight for world championships, and he's still a few steps away from that. You're right, but when we talked to Meldrick yesterday, Jim, he didn't seem to be champing at the bit. He seems to be philosophical about it. He understands that he's got a lot to learn. He even said that one thing I thought was very cute. He said, you know, I'm too excitable. I'm too excited about doing what I'm doing. I have to relax more in the ring. He said that was the one thing that he was going to concentrate on mentally in this fight. Two more good left hooks from Taylor. But now Ramos is no longer backing up. He seems determined to try to reestablish himself in the bout. He's not backing up, but he's not throwing punches. He's just a single shot here and there. Meldrick gets out of the way of it easily. Primo has too much offense for Meldrick Taylor to think about to get any offense off of his own. Round four comes to a close between Taylor and Ramos. Outside in Phoenix, the temperature hovers at about 88 degrees, and it is warming up as well inside the tent here at the point south mountain is meldrick taylor steps back in for round five against prima ramos about in which taylor has been the more effective puncher in each of the first four rounds one point was deducted under the 10 point must system for low blows in round two a few seconds ago primo ramos got inside but didn't let his hands go he has to punch on the inside, primarily to the body, try to get Meldrick's hands down. He's just lunging in with isolated punches like that, falling into clinches, and that's just totally ineffective. Both fighters sweating profusely, and Ramos, on a couple of occasions, has opened his mouth to breathe, which would indicate that he might be slowing down just a bit. Primo Ramos, and he's, is he going to even it up? Timeout to allow Meldrick to recover. Referee Al Munoz. You cannot stop a bout on a low blow. Meldrick grimacing. He has five minutes to recover. I guarantee he won't take that long. And Ramos chuckled to himself just a little bit as Ramos he went to the neutral corner. Ramos gesture, he was on the belt. It was clearly low. Let's take another look, Alex. Well, I'll tell you what, you can't take Mel. No, that's wrong. Meldrick Taylor's hand was pulling Ramos down. You cannot deduct a point when Primo Ramos is being fouled himself from
from behind. That's an incorrect deduction. The blow was definitely low, but Ramos has a legitimate beef that it was low because he was pulled down by Taylor's arm behind his head. That was rabbit punching for Belton. Munoz, of course, is without benefit of the slow motion replay. Taylor coming back with a little bit of a fury here. I think that fury is to Ramos' advantage. I mean, he wants to get Taylor this kind of an exchange, wide open exchange. His only chance really is to get lucky and land something inside. And this is also the stage at which Taylor gives up punching power in order to throw punches in such a flurry. Yeah, those really were ineffective flurries. Flashy looking, but not really scoring and not doing much damage. And leaving himself open to any kind of counter moves that Ramos might have. So far, he really has Good left hand by Ramos. Taylor staggered down. And suddenly, the tide of the bout shifts. Let's see if Prima Ramos can do anything to follow up. The left hook, which temporarily buckled Meldrick Taylor's knees. Meldrick looked down as though he was tripped or he was stepped on. Good right uppercut inside by Primo, scored. Come on, Melanie! Come on, Melanie! 20 seconds to go in round five. And for the first time in the fight, Meldrick Taylor was tentative. He fainted to throw a punch. He thought better of it and stood there and took a punch from Ramos. Well, that left hook has certainly given Meldrick Taylor a whole new perspective on the experience of fighting Primo Ramos. Good right left by Meldrick inside. Little 10 seconds of that round. Scored with a right hook to the head, came back with a left hook. Rounds five and six. As Lou Duva and George Bent will try to reestablish some continuity with Meldrick Taylor. Another look, Alex, at the low blow and a better chance to point out what you pointed out before about Taylor holding behind the head. Just to repeat, watch Meldrick's left hand come in. He pulls Ramos down. He's fouling and Ramos is fouling. Two fouls negate each other. You can't take a point away from Ramos on that. Now look at the Ramos left hook, which appeared to stagger Meldrick Taylor. Right on the button. See Meldrick look down? I think it's possible that Ramos, we couldn't see in that camera angle, it's possible that Ramos' left foot was on Meldrick's left. But whatever, there was a hard, hard punch from Ramos that scored there. Yeah, it's more important that the eight ounce Everlast was on Meldrick's face. Round six. Halfway through the 10 round bout. And pretty much what we expected. Primo Ramos has been tough. Meldrick Taylor's superior hand speed has been the decisive factor, but Ramos is making him work. Taylor 14 0 and 1 coming in. The record blemished only by the draw with Howard Davis last August in Atlantic City. Four times in his career, he has gone as far as 10 rounds. In this heat inside here, Jim, and as the fight wears in the later rounds, Primo Ramos' condition is going to be a factor. Both fighters' conditions can be a, are going to be factors. But Primo Ramos got here very late. He got in two days late because of problems getting out of Mexico and missing a plane connection because of those problems. He was in an airport overnight and didn't get in until yesterday. He can't be in the, in the best of physical condition to go 10 tough rounds. On the other hand, he grew up in the heat and humidity of Durango, Mexico, and Taylor is a product of Philadelphia. Three left hands from Meldrick there. Not one scores, but Primo Ramos has to deal with him. Just again there, two more that he, he blocked one and one missed. But meanwhile, Primo Ramos is not letting his own punches go. And in the first minute of the round, Meldrick was scoring with the jab. As he appeared to go back to basics a little bit to begin the round and try to come out of whatever funk remained from the left hook that staggered him in round five. Just count the number of punches that each boxer throws. Two misses there. Ramos blocked Meldrick's and he missed his own in, in return. But Meldrick is just throwing so many more punches. He's not landing the majority of them, but he's landing enough to win every, most of the round. Primo flicks a jab there. Nothing behind him. One body punch. Doesn't come up. Here. 
Isolated left hook that missed widely by Primo Ramos. In other words, he's just spending so much time trying to deal with Meldrick's offense and the hand speed. He just can't get into his own rhythm. Good right uppercut by Taylor. And now, Ramos is momentarily stunned. But when Meldrick had his man hurt, he really just threw arm punches, Jim. He didn't do what he said he's been working on doing, and that is throw hard, hard punches. He scored with the punches, but he didn't do the damage he might have done. Indeed, when Taylor seems able to do significant damage, often as not, it's because Ramos is coming toward him and thereby amplifying the force of Meldrick Taylor's blow. Still, Meldrick appears ahead and will be thrown. We bring you back live to the point at South Mountain in Phoenix, Arizona for round seven of this junior welterweight bout between Meldrick Taylor of the United States, former Olympic gold medalist, and Primo Ramos of Mexico, Taylor's first bout in this weight class, 140 pounds. And we remind you, coming up very shortly, live here on ABC Sports presents Slip Salt Liquor Professional Boxing, the WBA World Junior Middleweight Championship bout between title holder Mike McCallum and challenger Milton McCroy. And here is exactly what you've talked about so much, Alex. Meldrick Taylor, just much busier than Ramos, who appears for the first time in the bout to be running out of gas. Yeah, exactly right. He backed up the first time, not one step, but a lot of steps. Ran out of room when he's back hit the ropes, but Primo Ramos needed some distance to recover himself there. If you want to judge the effectiveness of Meldrick's punches, watch when he bends from the waist. If he's straight up, he's going to get an arm punch. It may score, it's not going to have any power. But when he bends at the waist, then he's going to get the power of his body and his legs into it. And that's what he's trying to learn how to do. Keep in mind, this is no easy bout on paper for Meldrick Taylor. Primo Ramos, 29 and 3. Check it. Primo Ramos, 30 and 4, I should say, with 21 knockouts coming in. Some of that record compiled against tough opposition. Ramos not letting his hands go, trying to buy some time in the inside. Meldrick doing all the work in there. Primo Ramos can punch very hard to the body. He's got a good right uppercut. You just saw him try it there. He's just not using the punches. One minute to go in the round. And I think you're right, Jim, what you said earlier in this round. He has finally run out of gas, perhaps temporarily. But Primo Ramos right now is trying to buy some time. Getting hotter in this tent. As I mentioned before, the temperature outside high in the 80s, perhaps over 90. It was 105 degrees here two days ago. And both fighters should be feeling the effects of the heat. But for the moment, it appears to be Ramos who is struggling a little more. The body work by Taylor could be a factor in that, Jim. He's got Body. Good overhand right by Taylor. And again, Ramos stepped back a step. Blood beginning to trickle from the nose of Prino Ramos as round seven comes to a close. We bring you back for round eight as Meldrick Taylor in the white trunks comes out once again to face Primo Ramos in the red trunks. In round seven, Primo Ramos appeared to have tired considerably. And Taylor was able to continue to score as he has throughout the bout with effective combinations, largely on the inside where Ramos likes to fight. If the interplay between George Benton, Lou Dubin, and Meldrick in the corner in between rounds was any indication, Jim, Meldrick is also a little bit out of gas. He didn't show it in the round, but he really flopped on his stool when he got back in between rounds. And they were trying to, to jack him up a little bit to get him uh, back into the fight. He was complaining he's real tired. We've seen a lot less of the left hook in the last couple of rounds and more of the jab, and that could be an indication, too, that Taylor simply wants to get through the last nine minutes, hold on to his lead, and post another victory to add to his unbeaten professional slate. 
Ramos just isn't throwing punches anymore. He also doesn't have the energy to get away from sucker right hands like that one. Low blow, he's complaining, and it was a low blow. And now it is Prima Ramos who will. Okay, Prima Ramos is saying, hey, pal, if it's good enough for you to do, it's good enough for me to buy some time. I'm going to take some time. I'm going to ask for some time to recover. Now he told him, he told referee Munoz he was okay. The crowd is booing because they're saying Munoz didn't give Ramos the same time to recover that they gave Taylor, but it's Primo's own fault. Munoz says, you're all right, and, and Primo responding to his heritage says, yeah, I'm okay. You got to question his wisdom on that score. Yeah. He could have taken plenty more time, up to five minutes, as you pointed out before. Just to clarify that rule, you cannot, because boxing authorities consider the protectors to be sufficient, to protect you from a low blow serious enough to stop the bout, they say that you will not win a you cannot win a bout on a low blow. We'll give you five minutes to recover, but if you don't continue after the five minutes, you're counted out. Ramos now opening his mouth wide open to try to gasp for breath. Taylor again stunned him with a left hook inside. Those are not great punches from Meldrick. Just arm punches, just flicks. But Primo is, is so drained right now, he's making them look better than they are. So Meldrick Taylor is comfortably in control of this bout as round eight comes to a close. Two rounds to go in Phoenix as Meldrick Taylor and Primo Ramos come out to face each other once again. Both fighters visibly wilting in the heat. Taylor, obviously the man with more left at this point. Primo Ramos's tank is flat out on empty. He was totally drained in his corner in between rounds. Jimmy Montoya is chief second, pleading with him, just telling him six more minutes. Ramos looks willing to try, but he has he just really has nothing right now. And in all likelihood, just six more minutes probably won't do him any good because it would certainly appear that Taylor should have a comfortable lead in the bout. Won't do him any good, but Primo Ramos has a lot of pride. He's never been stopped except on a cut. He has one stoppage uh, on a second round cut. There wasn't a punch landed in that fight. Just a headbutt. And he really wants to at least go the distance and salvage that. He'd love to just sit on the inside and, and relax. But Taylor is letting his hands go and making him fight in there. What progress do you see from Meldrick Taylor above and beyond the showing he made against Howard Davis in the draw in Atlantic City eight months ago? Just as you're asking what progress, his progress almost ended. He walked into a right home hand for Primo Ramos. But Primo doesn't have enough to do any real damage at this point. Well, one thing, he's carried a lot of weight, more weight than he ever has before. He looks able to go the 10 rounds. He's fought at a high work rate, throwing a lot of punches. The one negative I might point out is that he just has a punch with the power he said he wanted to show coming into this fight. Occasionally he's done it, but he just hasn't done it consistently. That's Lou Duva, his co-trainer in the corner. Keeps asking for the jab. The jab was not a punch that they talked about a lot coming into this fight. They really wanted to get in and let both hands go and power punches, hooks, and right hands, the body into the head. But because of the toughness of Ramos, and because of the new experience of fighting at a heavier weight, they're taking what's working. Yeah, it good doesn't appear that that was a good uppercut. Doesn't appear that Ramos is going to go down. If, if that were going to happen, it probably would have happened before now. And I think they're a little bit afraid of Meldrick running out of gas completely. Still able to throw punches in flurries, but as Alex has pointed out several times, he gives up power as his feet dance and slip under these wild flurries of punches. But the crowd loves it as Taylor comes alive for the last 30 seconds of round nine. Back live in Phoenix, Arizona, as round 10 begins at 140 pounds. And Primo Ramos tries to come out with 
a bout saving flurry. Ramos obviously behind on points, or certainly it would appear that way to us. Seems to have very little left, but tried to use it all there in the first five seconds of round 10. They say protect yourself at all times. Meldrick Taylor just learned that it also means immediately have to touch gloves for the start of the final round because Primo just barely touched him and let his hands go. Ramos shows you his pride here. He simply will not back down or give up, even though he seems to have been beaten in the fight up to this point. I'm Jim Lampley with Alex Wallow. Remember, coming up following this, WBA Junior Middleweight World Championship fight between title holder Mike McCallum and challenger Milton McCrory himself, a former welterweight titleist. Primo Ramos is backing Meldrick Taylor up here for the first time in the fight, but it's just too little too late. You can see why Dubin Benton might have been a little worried about Meldrick running out of gas. Meldrick's punches have no steam at this point. But he still very, shows very the hand quickness. In another minute and a half, the key figures will be the three judges, Bob Cox, Bob Ferrara, and Joe Garcia, scoring under the 10-point must system, which is mandated here in Arizona. Blood continues to flow in a light trickle from the nose of Primo Ramos. Gutty performance by Ramos. You heard Jimmy Montoya saying in the corner, 30 seconds, 30 seconds. He's lying. There's a minute left. But he wants his fighter to flurry and leave a good impression with the judges. And still, despite the fatigue, Taylor is able to show you the remarkable hand speed which makes him such an outstanding prospect. The bolo punch will be more popular in the next few months. Just like on, Muhammad Ali ruined a generation on, of fighters, Sugar Ray Leonard may have ruined a generation of fighters with a uh, victory on, over Hagler. Come on, Melanie! Come on, Melanie! We'll ask you to expound on. on that a little later on, Alex. Well, it's just simply as we come to the close of this fight in which Primo Ramos played perfectly the role of opponent, tough enough to give Meldrick a test, and Meldrick Taylor showed why he has the ability, in the minds of many, to be considered a potential world champion with some more seasoning. So round 10 ends. Taylor goes over for the perfunctory embrace with Primo Ramos. And we now await the decision of three judges once again scoring the bout on the 10-point must system. Unofficially, it would appear that Taylor has added another victory to his list of professional conquests. We'll be back after this commercial and a word from our local stations. We are back live in Phoenix, and now ring announcer Jack Budd prepares to read the decision in the bout between Meldrick Taylor and Primo Ramos. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a unanimous decision. Now we'll read the scorecards as follows. Judge Bobby Ferrara scores about 97, 91. Judge Bob Cox scores about 99, 91. Judge Joe Garcia scores about 97, 91 for the winner. Meldrick Taylor. Meldrick Taylor goes to 15 wins, no losses, one tie. Eight knockouts are listed in that record. Primo Ramos drops to 30 and four in his broadest exposure to this point in his career and in what was indeed a gutty and commendable effort. And now Alex Wallow stands by with Meldrick Taylor and manager Lou Duva. Meldrick, you're still learning. 16th pro fight. What'd you learn today? <laughs> I learned that every time I go in there with Mexicans, it's going to be tough. <laughs> <laughs> but he was a crappy fighter. He had a lot of heart. and uh, I really didn't expect him to knock him out. I figured if I catch him early, I got a chance. But it was a good, tough 10 rounds. And I learned, you know, a lot going the distance again. How tired were you in the final round? Uh, I wasn't really tired. I was just cruising the last round, you know, because the guy was telling you, you know, as he came out, he was trying to knock me out. And, you know, I would have to just be cautious. 
Then uh, just run in there or nothing the way he was throwing the punches. Very quickly, how long till you fight for the title? A uh, couple fights. I'm up to 140. Uh, I, uh, I elected to go up, keep a couple pounds on me, started trying to get down to 37. But uh, if it's a fight for me to 35, I would expect to drop back down. I'll go for the 140 pound title. Any champ doesn't make a difference. They have the uh, Kamatu Davis fight coming up. If Davis beat him, I look to advantage the fight. Congratulations to you. Give special condolences to the Mr. and Mrs. Scurry and the Scurry family. I'm very sorry for what happened, and uh, God bless them. And uh, I would like to happy, say happy Easter to my family back home and my friends at the executive house. Thank you. Thanks, Melter. Congratulations on a good, tough win. Back to Jim Lampley at ringside. All right, thank you, Alex, and our congratulations to Meldrick Taylor coming.